Hello friends, design is what almost every engineer wants to do. It is the place where creativity rules, where stakeholder requirements, business needs and technical considerations all come together in the formulation of a product or a system. The design model provides details about software architecture, data structures, interfaces and components that are necessary to implement the system. Hello and welcome to our channel. Ullas Kumar Gokhale for learning. The topic for today is Design Engineering Part 1 Design within context of software engineering. So let us start with the agenda. Now first we'll give introduction about design. Then we'll study the goal of design. Then we'll study two terms diversification and convergence. Because these two terms are very important for the design. Then we'll study the topic design within context of software engineering the main topic then we'll study the data or class design architectural design interface design component level design and finally importance of software design so let us start with the introduction so software design encompasses the set of principles concepts and practices so it is surrounded or within it, it contains the data principles, concepts and practices. So these things will lead to the development of a high quality system or a product. Here product means software product. Now design principles establish a very important philosophy that guides the design work you must perform. So, these principles will guide us for performing our job. Then design concept. So this concept must be understood before the mechanics of design practice are applied. Because without understanding, we will not be able to apply the concepts properly. So design practice leads to the creation of various representation of software. So that serves as a guide for the construction activity that follows. So here the construction activity means the coding part. So that will be followed by the design. So the design will help us for that activity. Then the goal of design is to produce a model or representation that exhibits firmness, commodity and delight. So these are three very important characteristics of the software. We will see the details after some time then to accomplish this you must practice diversification and then conversion so these two terms are very important from the design uh, aspect so that's why we will study them so let us go to the goal of design so the goal of design is to produce a model or a representation that will exhibit firmness commodity and delight that is what we have just seen so what is firmness a program should not have any bugs that inhibits its function. So that is firmness or robustness. So the program should be robust so that it can perform its function well. And it should not contain any bugs. That is what we mean by the firmness. Then commodity. A program should be suitable for the purpose for which it was intended. That means the main purpose for which we are writing the program. It should be clear and program should be suitable for that. That is commodity. And the last term is delight. The experience of using the program should be pleasurable one. See, nowadays you are using many softwares and Windows 10, 11. So here, when we are using this, the experience is pleasurable or we are enjoying it. That is what we mean by the delight. So any software you are going to develop, the experience of using that software should be pleasurable. Then let us go to the two terms, diversification and conversion. So here, Ballade states that diversification is the acquisition of a repertoire of alternatives. That means we should have different alternatives for the raw material of the design. That means components, component solution and knowledge. 
so all which are contained in the catalogs facebook and in mind so we should have alternatives for that that is very important then once the diverse set of information is assembled then you can pick and choose elements from this so that is as per the requirement defined by the requirement engineer and analysis model so we'll have to pick up the elements from the set then as this occurs alternatives are considered and rejected that means we'll try different alternatives so if one fails we have to reject that and then finally you converge on one particular configuration of components and thus creation of the final product so we must have diversification as well as conversion so diversification and convergence combine intuition and judgment based on experience in building similar entities so here the entities means the different forms of classes and particular programs that are the entities here so set of principles and heuristics that guide the way in which model evolves a set of criteria that enables quality to be judged and process of iteration that ultimately leads to the final design consideration or representation so that is what will make use of diversification and convergence whenever we are designed then let us go to the design within the context of software engineering so software design it is at the technical kernel of software engineering and is applied regardless of the software process model that is used so we have different software process models so we'll be seeing that a beginning once software engineering requirements have been analyzed and modeled software design is the last software engineering action within the modeling activity and that's the stage for construction that is nothing but code generation and testing so once we have done with the requirement engineering then we go for the design each of the elements of the requirements model provides information that is necessary to create or four design models required for the complete specification of the design so what are these four design models first is the data or class design then second is architectural design then we have the interface design and lastly the component level so these are the four design models so we will be considering them in details so then let us see the flow of information during the software design so we have the analysis model or the requirement model so scenario based class based and behavioral based so these elements different elements from this they are fed to the design model you can see here here this is fed here then this is fed this is fed then this is fed here and this is fed here and using the design notation and design methods design produces data class design architectural design interface design and component level design so the flow of information will be from the analysis model to the design and as per the requirement the design model will produce the particular design then let us go to the data or class design so the data or class design transform the class model into design class realization and requisite data structures required to implement the software so here the in object oriented model we have the class so the data and class these models will be designed so different uh, names will be given to the classes and uh, data structures required to implement the software that will be decided here then the objects and relationship defined in the crc diagram and the detailed data content depicted by the class attributes and other notations provide the basis for the data design activity so we will take the 
things from the CRC diagram and the class attributes and then accordingly the relationship will be defined then part of the class design may occur in conjunction within the design of the software architect so when we are designing the architecture there also part of class design will be occurring there and more detailed class design occurs as each software component is designed so different components when we are designing those components at that time we'll go for more detailed class design then let us go to the architectural design so here it defines the relationship between the major structural elements of the software that is the architectural styles and the patterns that can be used to achieve the requirements defined for the system and the constraints that affect the way in which the architecture can be implemented so we'll have to consider all these aspects when we are going for the architectural design then architectural design representation that is nothing but the framework of computer based system is derived from the requirements model so as per the requirement will design the architecture so here you can see we have uh, different elements major structural elements and then architectural styles and patterns so this three combinedly they will give us the particular requirements and the constraints which are for the system then let us go to the interface design the interface design describes how the software communicates with systems that interoperate with it and with humans who use it so that is what the interface design will have to consider both the user interface as well as the interface within the system so they will be considered in the user the interface design then an interface implies a flow of information so uh, for example data or controls so this information will be flowing from one say, part to the other part in the system and uh, depending on the particular information if it is control then accordingly the action has to be taken therefore usage scenarios and behavioral models provide much of the information required for the interface design so here why this usage, usage scenarios are important because in the usage scenarios we consider all this flow of information who will be giving information to what so that will be uh, in the usage scenarios and behavioral model so the interface design will take that information and uh, it will be the design of the interface will be done then the next is component level design the component level design transforms structural elements of the software architecture into a procedural description of the software component so what does it mean here whatever structures we are having the software architecture so they are transformed into procedural description for example we uh, when we are writing any program we make use of the flowchart so there step by step we go as per the flowchart or we write the algorithm and then we uh, go according to the algorithm so that is what so here also similar way component level design it will do the same thing then information contained from the class based model and the behavioral model serves as the basis for the component design because whatever classes we are having and accordingly the objects how they will be functioning within the class and functions so that is what we will be trying to do at the component then next is importance of software design so the importance of software design can be stated within a single word that is nothing but the quality so design is the place where quality is fostered in software engineering so we focus on the quality and design provides you with the representation of software that can be assessed for quality and design is the only way that you can accurately translate 
stakeholder's requirement into a finished software product or a system. So whatever stakeholder requirement is there, that has to be transformed into a software product. So as per the requirement, we have to make the software. Then software design serves as the foundation for all the software engineering and support activities that will be followed. So the software design is the foundation. So from the design, we'll go for the different things like the other activities in software engineering, scheduling, then deployment and maintenance. So all these things are affected by the software design. Without design, you risk building an unstable system. So if you are not going for de design, then you will make a unstable system. So one that will fail when small changes are made, one that may be difficult to test and we cannot access the quality of that system. So if you are designing the system properly, then all these things, whatever changes you want to make, they can be made easily and it will be able to test them properly and easily. And we can assess the system process easily. So that is what design is very important then with this we come to the end of this video if you have any questions you can contact me on facebook twitter gmail or instagram then if you like the video press the like button share with your friends and subscribe to our channel plus kumar Bokhle for learning and don't forget to press the bell icon so that you get next videos on this subject that is software engineering and thanks for watching. Have a nice day.